Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 3C of the book, Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 81, and the question we're going to do is number 8. It reads, particle is projected with speed 4 root 5 meters per second at an angle tan inverse a half to the inclined plane. The plane makes an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal. Assuming that the particle is projected along the line of greatest slope to find the speed of the particle when it lands. So to be honest, this is a very straightforward question. It's very similar to everything else we've done so far. So the first thing we're going to draw is a sketch of the, of sketch of the motion. So we draw our x-axis, we draw our y-axis making our x-y plane. Then we draw our x-prime axis or our slope. And we draw perpendicular to that our y-prime axis. So what we've done here is rotated the x-y plane anti-clockwise by 45 degrees. So that means, of course, that this angle here is 45 degrees. We've projected the particle at an angle, which I'll speak about in a moment, but it's an angle with, re with respect to the incline. And the angle is tan inverse a half. So we're going to call this alpha. So if we have tan inverse, so that tan is a half there like so, so this will turn out to be root 5. So cosine is 2 over root 5 and sine is 1 over root 5 for the angle alpha. Alright, so let's get rid of that. Next thing we need to do is resolve our velocity vector. So u, actually I'll define my unit vectors like so. This is i hat, this is j hat. So u is equal to u sub x, i hat plus u sub y, j hat. u is equal to, now we're given we'll say the magnitude of the velocity which is 4 root, or the, the speed we'll say, which is 4 root 5. So 4 root 5 cos alpha i hat plus 4 root 5 times the sine of alpha j hat. So u is equal to 4 root 5 over root 2 because the cos of 45, uh, oh, not alpha, excuse me, Alpha, that's different. No, take that, that take that back. So that's two over root five. I hat plus four root five times the sine, which is one over root five. J hat. Giving me eight I hat plus four J hat. Eight I hat plus four J hat. Alright, so we're doing okay so far. The next thing we need to do is work out the gravity vector. Now the gravity vector of course acts in the negative y direction. So it acts like this. And we need to resolve it. So we first of all draw a parallel to the y prime. Then to the x prime. They need to be going in these directions in order to add together to make the gravity vector g. So we know that g is equal to g sub x i hat plus g sub y j hat. g is equal to g times. Now this angle here is also 45 degrees because if you were to move this up here it would this the g sub y vector would bisect the x prime axis at 90 degrees so this is g times the sine of 45 i hat plus g times the cos of 45 j. The cos and sine of 45 are 1 over root 2 so we get g is equal to g over root 2, that's root 5, i hat, plus g over root 2, j. Alright, so we're okay so far, we've done, we've, done, we've done all the difficult bits. Now the next thing you need to do is work out the time at which the particle hits the ground. Now, you got to look at this, if just quickly sketch this again, right? Now, if the particle is on just, we'll say, the, in the blue, and it's on the xy, xy plane, when it hits the ground, obviously, v sub y is equal to zero, right? So it's gone from here to here. And you can say, well, of course it's gone, you know, it's, it's just, of course the, the, the condition for maximum range is when it's after hitting the ground. However, it's not as clear, it's not as clear when you have an incline. So if I have an incline here, well then, where, what's the condition for maximum height? Oh, sorry, not maximum height for for maximum range. Now it's not it's not the case to say that v sub y is equal to zero. That is not the case.
because v sub y is not equal to 0 with respect to the xy plane which is in blue however if you remember what we're after doing is we're after rotating the plane we're after making a new plane the x prime y prime plane and the conditional still stands for that because it's still after hitting the x prime axis so the condition will still stay the same provided that you change the axes so that's what we've done so our condition will stay the same so we go x prime y prime this was 8 this was um, oh can't remember now uh, <laughs> just let me do that again so what was it again it was 4 times root 5 times the sine which is yeah so it's 4 yeah 4 uh, this here was g over root 2 this here was g over root 2 like that so we need to find out s sub y. So that's ut plus a half a t squared. So it's 4t plus g over 2 root 2 t squared. And here it's 8t plus g over 2 root 2 t squared. Alright. So we need to find out the time at which s sub y is equal to 0. So s sub y is equal to 0 is equal to 4t plus g over 2 root 2 t squared so take out t we get 4 plus g over 2 root 2 t is equal to 0 if two things are multiplied together to create 0 one of them must be 0 so in this case t is equal to 0 and separately uh, minus 4 times 2 times root 2 over g is equal to t. So just let me work out what that time is. So 8 root 2, so it's 8 root 2 over g. Yeah, that's correct. So it's minus 8 root 2 over g. Now, of course, this is a, a negative, a positive number because g is also negative. And that's correct. You'll find that in the in the your solutions as well. So 8 root 2 over g. So you know that 8 root 2 over g, t is equal to 8 root 2 over g, the particle is after hitting the ground again. So we just mark this, minus 8 uh, root 2 over g, like so. So all we need to do now is find the velocity vectors. So v sub y, v is equal to u plus at, so it's 4 plus at, so it's g over root 2 t. And here it's 8 plus g over 2 times t. So v sub x is equal to 8 minus 9.81 over root 2 times minus 8 root 2 over g. Of course, though, that 9.81 and that g can cancel. The root 2s can cancel. So we have 8 minus 8 and we get v sub x. v sub x is equal to 0 meters per second, which is correct. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is get v sub y. So we go v sub y is equal to 4 minus, uh, let's we'll say plus g over root 2, we'll leave it like this for a moment times t which is minus 8 root 2 over g so we can cancel some pieces here as well we get 4 minus 8 so we get v sub y is equal to minus 4 meters per second and we got that v sub x was equal to 0 meters per second now what does this mean well we're talking about vectors so a vector has both a magnitude and a direction. And what this answer is after telling us is the direction of the velocity vector. So I'll just quickly explain this. If this is our xy plane, now, we, we, right, that's our xy plane. We define plus and plus like that. Now, if we take off 
with our velocity vector in this direction here, what quadrant are we in? We're in the quadrant has plus plus, uh, minus plus, minus minus, plus minus. We're in this quadrant up here. So you have plus plus, which is exactly what we had. We had v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat. But now look what we're after having here. We have, okay, we'll assume that this is a plus zero. Just, just, for, the, just for the crack, we'll assume that's plus zero. But we're in the negative y. So here do we have plus zero and negative y? We have it in this quadrant here. So what that means is that the particle is an actual fact going this direction which is exactly what you'd expect. And you might say, well, why, do, why would I expect that? I'll just show you why you'd expect it. Because look, the particle is after going up, and he's now on the way back down. So where is his velocity vector? But going downwards. So this shows you that the, we're, after, we, we're after getting the direction right. Of course, we should always get a negative v sub y at the end, and a positive v sub y at the start. So the next thing and final thing we need to do is get the magnitude of this, or its speed. Now, we know, of course, that well, the speed is equal to the is, is the magnitude of the vector. So there's the vector v, and its magnitude is equal to its magnitude squared is equal to v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. Therefore, v, the magnitude of v is equal to the square root of v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. All right. So that means it's zero squared plus uh, sixteen rooted, and that's four meters per second which is correct. So that's that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.